Today we are looking at some working dog foods. So if you have a working dog, this is definitely the video for you. Now before we start, I want to tell you that not so much you should look at what brands say on the front of the packet. You should always read all the ingredients for everything you give your dog, whether that's your working dog food or whether that's any treats you give the dog always remember to read the ingredients and if you stay until the end of the video i will reveal the big secret of working dog food so stay tuned for that and by no means this list is all encompassing i will have obviously left out some working dog foods but I have tried my best to encompass a, a pretty wide range. The first one is this working dog food company. And obviously there are many, many different recipes, but all recipes within the same dog food will, or the same brand will very much be very, very similar unless you have different tiers. And this is the grain free salmon with trout, sweet potato and asparagus which sounds delicious. But again, we are always interested in the composition of the recipe. We have salmon and trout, and that includes 50% of the dog food. We then have freshly prepared salmon and trout, that's 36% and 12% dried salmon with 2% salmon stock. So the first ingredient is meat, coming from salmon and trout, and those are wonderful. We then get into the filler, the carbohydrates, and the carbohydrates they have included are sweet potato, peas, and potato. 24% uh, sweet potato, peas 9%, and potato, which is un specified we do not know the proportion of potato that has gone into this recipe we do know that 24 percent and nine percent are sweet potato and peas so what do we think about this food it is okay it's not bad for for the price it's 59 pounds 60 quid and for 60 pounds you get a 50 50 bag of dog food where 50 percent is salmon and trout it's very high in sweet potato that's a quarter of the bag and a further nine percent is peas so it is high in in filler the next one we are going to look at is the Eden 8020, and this is the working dog 15 kilos and you get all these big bags and we are not interested in the big bags or small bags all we are interested in is in the ingredients so the composition freshly prepared chicken that's 19 percent we then get into the dried chicken 18 percent freshly prepared salmon 15 percent dried herring 12 percent dried sweet potato 11 percent chicken fat 4.5 percent dried duck 4 percent tapioca, dried whole eggs, chicken liver, freshly prepared white fish. We have an amalgamation of wonderful ingredients in my opinion. We have chicken, we have salmon, we have herring, we have chicken, we have duck, we have egg, we have chicken liver. So we had all those tidbits that are so good for our dogs. Whenever you see things like liver, any other offal, any spleen, any tendon in dog food, those tend to be really, really valuable because our dogs really, really love that sort of thing we then have pea fiber and chickpea flour not the biggest fan of pea fiber and chickpea flour but those tend to be quite nominal the crude protein which is the real protein is 42 percent that is very very high in a kibble what is the verdict eden is a wonderful food all varieties are pretty pretty good although this is 85 quid so it will set you back a bit more than the other food uh, we then get into the yukonuba and this is the working and endurance and it will set you back about 55 quid and uh, the composition is very very interesting we have dried chicken and turkey and that's 25 percent I love that. 15% chicken, and that's wonderful. Fresh chicken is 21%. So dried chicken and turkey and fresh chicken are the main two ingredients. Incredible. But we then get into something I don't really like, which is maize 
pork fat, which is okay, but wheat, rice. So undisclosed amounts of maize, wheat, and rice. Maize, wheat, and rice are inflammatory. They are high on the glycemic index. They're not very good ingredients to put in dog food and they really are inflammatory ingredients. Those are ingredients I would not want to see in my dog's food. What do we think about Yukonuba? Good first ingredients, wheat, maize and rice, absolutely not. It's a no from me. The next one is this breeded pack dog and this is the 15 kilo complete food and this will set you back 15 pounds here in the UK and well the list of ingredients is quite remarkable if you ask me. We have cereals, we have meat and animal derivatives, we have derivatives of vegetable origin, we then get into very sugars, minerals and vegetable protein extracts and yeasts. Cereals in dog food, hmm, as a first ingredient, okay. Meat and animal derivative. What meat and what animal derivatives? Your guess is as good as mine. Derivatives of vegetable origin, again, which derivatives? A car crash. Various sugars, sugars in dog food, absolutely not. These could be offered for free and I would not feed it to my dog. We then get into Chutley's, very, very popular brand. This is 14 kilos and this will set you back 22 pounds. Very, very popular food. We get into the flaked whole grain wheat. So flaked whole grain wheat, that's the first ingredient. We then get into the poultry meal, minimum of 14%. We don't really understand what poultry means. We don't really know whether that's chicken or any other poultry. We don't know, they don't tell you, they don't wanna tell you, and that's for a reason, because they don't really know themselves. Um, flaked whole grain, whole grain maize, okay, whole grain wheat, chicken fat, okay, glucose syrup, rice lamb meal, rice lamb meal, or rice and then lamb meal, I'm not sure. Hydrolyzed chicken, flaked peas, uh, wheat feed, beet pulp, turkey meal, prairie meal, alfalfa, rapeseed oil, etc, etc. So we have a bit of a car crash of ingredients here. Flaked whole grain wheat, absolutely not. Poultry meal, way too unspecific and that's only 14%. Flaked whole grain, whole grain maize, absolutely not. Whole grain wheat, no. Chicken fat, yes. Glucose syrup, it's not a Starbucks, it's a dog food, absolutely not. Rice, lamb meal, hydrolyzed chicken, flaked peas, um, wheat feed, I mean, I, I would, this would not touch my, my dog. We then go into fish for dogs, a uh, pretty popular food. It's, it's a niche food and they pride themselves in being just fish based. And this is the working dog sardine adult. And this is a subscription. I believe this will set you back 79.99. So 80 quid for a 15 kilo bag of food. Composition is 26% sardines, yes. Salmon meal, okay, 21.5%. Sweet potato, 20%, okay. And then pea starch, beet pulp, salmon oil, bruised yeast, etc., etc. So we get about 26 and 21%, so that's what, 47% meat in, uh, in the bag of dog food. And then we get the pea starch, and the sweet potato. Um, the, the pea starch, they don't really tell you how much they put in and I'm, I am not a fan of that. I am not a fan of companies that overcharge for soap bar products. I like the sardine and I like the salmon meal. What I don't like is the 20% sweet potato and an undisclosed amount of pea starch. That would be okay if the bag cost 20 or 30 pounds less, but for an 80 pound bag of food, 
I, I, I don't think that's good value for money. We go into Skinner's. Skinner's is probably, if not the biggest, one of the most popular working dog foods. And this is a very, very popular dog food. So the field and trial, the working dog food, this will set you back 29 pounds uh, and you can get it pretty much anywhere. The, the ingredients could not be any worse and I'll tell you why. We have wheat, we have meat and bone meal, we have maize, we have naked oats, we have prairie meal, maize gluten, rice, poultry fat, wheat bran and vitamins and minerals. So you are paying uh, about 30 pounds for wheat, for meat and bone meal, we don't really know what meat it is or what bone meal that is. We then get maize and naked oats, so like porridge, you know, essentially. We get prairie meal. I don't really know, understand what a prairie meal is and I'm in the industry, so maize gluten in, 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 in brackets. We then get into rice, poultry fat and wheat bran. Um, Skinner's, have been labeling themselves as working forever and they use that as an excuse to pack the bags full of filler like wheat, like meat and bone meal, like maize, like oats, rice and wheat bran and sell it to you the consumer and for you to pay for something like this and in my opinion this is one of the worst dog foods you can you can get. So that's how I sort of skim for information whenever it comes to working dog food. Now, the, the, the main thing about working dog food and the big secret is that any working dog food is VAT exempt. You have brands as well uh, in the raw food category like Nutriment, for example, and those are VAT exempt. So the, the, the company is selling you a product that doesn't attract VAT when it is purchased. So it's aimed to be slightly cheaper. And because it is slightly cheaper, it's a bit more enticing for the consumer if they have a working dog. Although, no one really checks whether you have a working dog or you have a Pomeranian and that's the sort of dog food you give them. So with everything you give your dog, irrespective of whether it says working or puppy or senior or whatever that might be, always check that the ingredients are really, really good. If the ingredients are your wheat, your barley, your cereals, your meat and animal derivatives, your meat and bone meals, your sorghums, your, your naked oats, your prairie meals, your poultry fats, those are all pretty, pretty poor ingredients, really, in my opinion, not up to scratch when it comes to dog food, and they should never be in pet food. And uh, that is that is my opinion. That's why we don't sell a lot of these dog foods because they aren't up to scratch. These foods, if you carry on feeding them or if you feed them for long periods of time, these are the sort of dog foods that then dogs eat and develop allergies and gut issues and skin allergies and all sorts of things and these are all derived from your high wheat and carb meal and carb filled diets and from simply feeding something to the dog that is unspecific. If I give my dog uh, a chicken breast and my dog doesn't like chicken breast uh, for whatever reason and they throw it up, then I know that I have given my dog a chicken breast. When I give my dog meat and bone meal, when I give my dog a prairie meal or poultry fat, I don't really understand what I am giving my dog and therefore my dog won't do very well with them. So if you like this sort of content and you really want to know what is the best dog food for your dog, you should watch this video next.